we're trying another new angle to see if I can stop this glare on my glasses. And welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. This is a crafty puppy podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I am your host, Gabby, and you can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and on my hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to come chat with us. Hello, all new viewers. Welcome and welcome back, all returning viewers. We have both puppies in the room with us today. And they are a little bit hyper because I tried to take them on a walk and we got half a block away from the apartment and then they decided to turn around. 
no idea. So we're just rolling with it. We have a couple things to get into before, thank you, Iron. Uh, we get into the knitting. First off, we have the rules sock cal. Uh, I extended the deadline to June 30th because I didn't read my own rules thread and said May 30th and then completely forgot about everything because I'm a terrible cal hostess. So we are extending that until June 30th. And we have posted the prize in the thread in our Ravelry group, Once Upon a Corgi Podcast, groups tab on Ravelry, and that is the yarn portion of the After the Rain sock kit. So you will get one full skein of fiddleheads and one uh, minigram of puppy paws. Uh, it's just the yarn, no pattern or charm will be going with it, but feel free to head on over and join. I never do write down everything properly. I know we are hosting another giveaway, no, I think we are going to host another giveaway. So I will be putting uh, the thread up in the Ravelry group for that as well. Uh, I believe we're gonna start that next week. Kick off July with a giveaway. So keep an eye out for that. And I think that is it, right? We have no, the only events we have coming up in the immediate future is the Super Summer and Knit Together Marketplace, which is July 21st, a Saturday in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm super excited. Uh, and I believe that's it for the rest of the month. What yeah, bud? You just want pets? So with that, let's get into the crafting. We'll start off with what am I wearing? I am wearing the V-neck Betty dress by Sew Over at London in some cotton and steel double gauze with little sparkles everywhere. It's one of my favorite dresses. It's probably the most comfortable, although I'm having trouble with the shoulders at the moment. I think I might just need to go in and do a small adjustment to get them to kind of stay up. Also, I'm fighting with the facing today, but that just might be today. What? I can't lift you up. You're not a lap dog anymore. Do you want to come on my lap? He wants to snuggle, but he doesn't want you to pick him up. All right, finished objects. Uh, we have officially and actually finished our socks. We did a fish, uh, they are uh, just plain vanilla socks on, I think it's on online. I have yet to find the tag. No idea, but it's just a generic wool and nylon blend self-patterning yarn. I showed you these last week without heels and now they both have heels. One is a fish lips kiss, one is an afterthought heel, but they were both knit on US 1 2.25 millimeter high high sharps with 64 stitches. Um, and I did wedge toe for both of them, two by two rib, super easy. They've been washed, they've been blocked, and they will be going into the sock drawer for the fall. So quick recap of these guys, they are here, they are done. Now I have no vanilla socks on the needles. Our second finished object, uh, we just cast off this morning, so it has not been washed or blocked or ends woven in, and that is the baby blanket I am working on. Uh, so it's way smaller than I thought it was gonna be, but. This is a hand spun from a loop bump. I don't remember the, na the name, it's Creekside or Swamp something. I don't know. Uh, it's a chain ply, about a DK to worsted weight. And I just did a like star shape for it. And it's done, we have to block it. So our plan is to just block the bejesus out of it because it will grow a lot. And um, this will be a baby blanket present for one of the ladies in my knit group. So I thought this would be perfect for, um, not one of the ladies in my knit group, one of the ladies in my knit group's daughter is having the baby. So I thought this would be a perfect like car seat blanket or stroller blanket, just something small to throw, to tuck, tuck over them. I don't know. Uh, the baby's due in October. So I feel like that would be super handy because it's still pretty warm in October. So that is that. I'm going to wash and block it after I record today. And I think I will definitely do this again with more yarn instead of just one skein uh, for future BB knits for Feebles. I really like it. I don't know if I'll do hand spun again, probably not, but this was the perfect project for this hand spun because I did not know what to do with it. So that, <laughs> is that I will make a project page for this. I didn't use a pattern, um, but I'll write down the recipe that I used in case you are interested. I know there is a pattern out there. Uh, somebody said that they knit one of these before and I just used like a shawl recipe to do it. Hmm. And that is that. So this is knit number one for this baby. I do plan on either knitting her, I believe it's a girl, 
uh, a cardigan, like a play, playful stripes cardigan, or a sweet pea dress, because I feel like those would be really good quick knits. And also I have a lot of sock yarn to go through. <laughs> All right, so that is it for finished objects. We can move into whips. I didn't, I don't think I grabbed any of them. Hold on, oh, let me check. Oh wait, I left them all in the other room. I'm terrible at this podcasting thing today. What am I doing with my life, Ira? These whips are brought to you by sweaters. Uh, I've been working a lot on my shawl design. Uh, everything is going smoothly. I just got the pattern sent out to the tech editor. So by mid-July, I'll be putting out a uh, pre-SSK. I'll be putting out a call for test knitters. So if you are interested in that, keep an eyeball out. But in the meantime, I have been working on my Michelada Pullover by Nadia Stalling in Pom Pom issue number 13. And we have cast on this look so itty bitty, the itty bitty arms. <laughs> oh, it's so comical. Uh, <laughs> so I have cast that on. Um, I get about halfway through the moss stitch section and then realized I like messed up in one spot. So I'd rip it all out, but that's it's okay. We made it. Uh, and we are just cruising through this. Again, I am hoping, I don't think I'm gonna get this done for SSK, but it'd be a nice dream, especially since I have to redo the whole back, but what? That's fine, that's fine. Uh, yeah, we are cruising through it. I think it's going to be a very lovely summer top. Uh, I am using Leading Men Fiber Arts in their showstopper base, which is 75-25 merino nylon in the Gothic Queen colorway, and I'm using uh, size four and eight knit pro zings so those are those guys and i think now that i've done the back and messed up it's like i said last week it's going a lot better you're chugging along so this is going to be my main focus over the next couple weeks i think because i would really like to get a lot of this done not enough has been done to be like wow we made this much project it's like two inches but that's whatever that's okay it is going to be my main focus. I think I'm gonna have to go a little monogamous to get a lot of these projects off the needles. Just kinda bear figuring that out. Cause I do, I just, I have so many things going on. It's just starting to make me panic. The next sweater that we have been working on surprisingly a lot, and I didn't realize it until the other day is my Branches and Buds Pullover. This will be I know I'm like way ahead of the game, but this is Rybic sweater at number one, weather depending. Uh, and this is by Carrie Bostic Hodge in, from The Making Magazine. And I'm knitting this out of Blacker Yarns Brushwork base in the colorways Impasto, which is this red, and Scumble, which is this like minty green. And we have finished our sleeves and we are in the body, the body of the beast, if you will. And we're just, it's just knitting forever and ever and ever. Uh, I took this on the I-91 Shop Pop and this was my card knitting. I brought this to the movie theater the other day and that was great. So I think this might be my new knitting, my, my new movie knitting. I don't think we have any other movies we're gonna see in the next couple months in the theaters, but that's fine. It's just very nice. It's a Giant Gundo DK slash sport weight sock and I love it. I didn't do that much in the theater, did I? No, I think I did that. I think I did from the burrito down um, Sunday and Monday. Uh, I've got like 11 inches of the body to knit, so we are in no rush here, but I love it so much. I really enjoy this yarn. I really enjoy this pattern. It's very simple. I think it's a really good like intro to color work kind of thing. I'll keep holding it up for you. I'll just hang out like this. How's that? Uh, yeah, I think it's a really good like beginner sweater pattern as well. It's very easy, easily read and understood, and you get a little extra. It's not it's not a very hard uh, chart to follow at all or color work bit, but it looks very nice and fancy. So I think if you are interested in starting color work and want to go big on a sweater, I would say this is it. I don't think I'm gonna do the buds bit but we will see when I get there. And again, this is Rhymebic Sweater number one, weather depending. <laughs> if it turns out like last year, it might just be a uh, like 
carry around with me sweater because it will be too hot to wear. Mm -hmm. And I'm knitting these on my US5 Knit Pro Zings, which are my favorite needles ever, I think. I think they're my favorite everything needles. And he is still living in my Mataru bag uh, because it fits and I have two extra balls of yarn in here. So I'm ready to go when I need to attack them. And between those two and the shawl, that's really what I've been working on. I haven't touched the birds of a feather really. Uh, I'm in the lace section, so I have to get that started before I bring it to the next knit group. And I haven't really touched any of my other projects. Oops. I do want to finish um, the Michelada, the shawl design, and then pick up I think I want to finish Birds of a Feather and then I'll finish the Electric Love because I do have the um, Sam sample for it. So I'm not in a huge rush to finish that immediately because she's not going to need to wear it for a little while now that we are in summer, which thank you for letting me borrow that for 10 years, basically. Uh, so I think that's my plan and then cast on a couple more socks just to have them going now that I have no vanilla socks. Um, I have the cuff done for the Hermione's Everyday Sock, but again, saving that for vending stuff, so that is ready to go. And I think that's really been it for the crafting. I haven't spun, I haven't sewed. I know I just have to like add buttons and snaps to all of my stuff. I just haven't had the chance or motivation to sit down and do it. I haven't touched the fleeces. I know Tour de Fleece is coming up, but I just really, I wanna finish uh, this bobbin of spinning. I just haven't gotten the motivation to pick up that fiber and that just makes me super sad because even if I like don't do anything with it and sort of like recycle it to Adrian or something I still have this whole bobbin of leftover stuff and I'm really sad that I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. I do however this week have way more stash building than I ever anticipated or wanted really. <laughs> it just happened by accident. Uh, over the weekend, I did the I-91 Chop Hop with Adrian and Mama Gergs. So that is 11 stores, 10 stores, 11 stores, I don't remember, uh, between Brattleboro, Vermont, and New Haven, Connecticut. So we did Friday, uh, we did Glastonbury, and I don't remember all the names of the shops, so I'm just going to say the towns, and I will leave a list in the show notes of what the shops actually were. We did Glastonbury, uh, Northampton Wolves in Northampton, and Webbs, also in Northampton. They're like half a mile away from each other. And um, South Deerfield, Massachusetts. We did One Can I Get Three, Massachusetts. Um, and this is a little bit life stuff, so we'll just... I-91 Chop Hop Recap is what this is. So we did those three Friday, and uh, we took the afternoon and went to the Yankee Candle Shops and walked around those for way too long, probably because we got lost like 15 times, had some ice cream, and then drove up to Brattleboro where we stayed over that night. Uh, and then Saturday we did Green Mountain Spinnery first. And I love Green Mountain Spinnery. I have a sweaters quantity right here that will be my second Rhinebeck sweater. I really hope it's cold this year. Uh, but I did pick up, I almost bought a sweaters quantity, but I put it down and I did pick up one skein of their weekend wool, which is a two ply worsted covered in dog hair already in the teal colorway. Da -da -da, can you see all the dog hair? Yep. And it's just hundred percent, uh, American wool. And my plan is to pair this with my spin cycle and just have a super tealy color or cowl um and I'm super excited for it so I'm definitely gonna be casting this on in between this finishing thing now that I have some cables free I just have to find the right pattern I thought I had one but I don't know if it if it's the right one anymore I'm not sure what I want to do I might just look at some Norwegian uh, I have one Norwegian hand knit book that has some charts in it so I might just sort of make one up and go with that because I feel like this would be super beautiful. It's like those Norwegian like flowers. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. I'm so excited. So I'm definitely going to cast these on as like a treat to myself as a quick knit. 
Oh, where's my book? Oop, I just threw that. Sorry, Irene. Hold on. I forgot something. Again. Book. There you are. Put you over here so I wouldn't forget about you. Just kidding. The first thing I got was on Friday when we went to South Deerfield. Also, before I forget, we got a bajillion and a half patterns as part of the shop hop. Everyone gave out a pattern and they were all really good. Usually it's a lot of like ponchos, hats, mitts, but there's uh, shawls, cowls, mosaic stuff, a blanket, a lot of good stuff. Before I forget. Uh, South Deerfield uh, is Sheep and Shawl, I believe. Let me see. They were celebrating their fifth year of business. And so they had these adorable little uh, stitch markers made. Oh, sheepies. How cute is that? And I picked up, I told myself I was gonna buy any yarn. Spoilers, I already bought yarn. But I picked up uh, by hand. Basically like a book magazine, it's byhandserial.com, based out of Portland, Oregon. And it's got patterns, um, articles, about different makers, designers, stores. It's got a recipe in it. Do, 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 ta-da. The photography is beautiful. I haven't read anything yet. Oops, don't look at that chart. Or any of the articles, but there's like ones about a restaurant in Maine. There's an interview with Hannah Fettig in here. Uh, an interview with Matterroot, which I'm very excited to get into. It's just really, it's, very nice. Bristol Ivy's got an interview in here. Um, and I don't believe that they're selling these books in stores anymore. You have to subscribe to get them. I think that's what the woman said. I don't remember. <clears throat> so I picked this up because there are a couple like, um, I thought like the mitts would be a really good, uh, like quick gift knit. Yeah, there we go. So I thought these would be fun to do. And I definitely want to do the sweater. Oh, it's got directions on it. That's got directions on it. That's got directions. Oh, what's? All right. The sweater. I really like that. Um, and then they had a blanket and a scarf recipe. They also have like the red recipe. So I thought this was really interesting. And it kind of goes along the same like aesthetic is like the the plain and simple and the making magazines and I think if you enjoy those you'll really enjoy this as well so I'm really glad I have this in my book collection I think maybe I'm becoming a pattern hoarder now so I'm really glad I picked this up and then Friday we did Green Mountain yeah we did Green Mountain we did um Brattleboro Vermont and then we drove down to Margie's in Granby, Connecticut. And I did not get anything there, but if you are looking for a nice drive, I highly recommend it. And they have a whole wall of koi goo, which I wasn't so overwhelmed and like already done shopping with everything. I probably would have gotten some of the koi goo, but it was just so overwhelming. And she gave us these little tags to sew on stuff. How cute. Uh, so that was Saturday. And then Sunday we did Woodbridge, Branford, and no, Wallingford, Woodbridge, Branford, New Haven. So we ended up at New Haven last, but we, uh, Woodbridge, I did get something. I believe that's the yarn barn. And they had some Jameson Spindrift on sale. So I started putting together the Dem, Dem like a Yopa. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering that. The flea cardigan. Kristen knit one last year around Rhinebeck. And so I started collecting mine. Uh, okay, everywhere. There we go. So I have two of the contrast colors and then this um, golden, like spicy mustard color is going to be the button band and the dots. And the main body is going to be, I think a medium to dark charcoal. And I have, um, a burnt orange and a dark red to go with these guys. Yeah. I mean, it's like a must. 
I think it's called Rust and something else. I don't remember. I have them written down somewhere, I swear. So just imagine it. Maybe I'll, if I have, I have a photo of it, so I'll put that in here. Unfortunately, uh, their Jameson slash most of their cubbies are not very well organized. So it's like a TJ Maxx. Like if you're good at looking through stuff and finding the things, this place is for you. But if you like panic and need things like lined up for you, maybe go in with a little bit of uh, preparedness. So I found all the colors, but because it was all mixed up with weights, uh, the other two colors were only in DK weight. They did not have it in the fingering weight. So I'm just going to slowly gather them uh, and go from there. So that's my plan is to just slowly acquire them because they are in the smaller balls. I can just get them a couple at a time and not drop a ton of money all at once. So that's what I got. And this is probably the biggest purchase. I don't know when I'm going to make this. I have no definite plans to do it in the near future. Maybe next year. Maybe next year's Rhinebeck sweater. We will see. We'll see where, where everything takes us. So that was the shop off. I spent way more money than I thought I was going to. The plan was to not buy any yarn and I came out with this, but I think it's, it's really hard not to buy any yarn when you've gone to 11 stores in three days and you just feel a little bit awkward walking into these stores and looking at stuff and then going, no, nah, I can't take any of this. Like it just kind of got to me. And for that reason, I don't think I'm gonna do it again next year. It was fun. It was a nice one trip. If you haven't done it, I highly recommend it. But when you're not looking for yarn, repeatedly going into yarn shops is just not that much fun because then you feel bad for like going in and talking to these people and then not buying anything. And like, you feel weird, like just standing there awkwardly. Cause if you don't look at it, then you can't want to buy it. So I don't think I'm going to do it again next year. It was a lot of fun, but I think it was a one-off kind of thing. <laughs> and saying that I did win two door prizes. <laughs> I thought I only won one, but turns out I won two. And I think I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit, but I think I might use these for giveaways on the podcast because they're perfect kits, which is what most of the door prizes are. So I feel like you guys would really enjoy these as well. Uh, I won the Knit New Haven one, which I sat down and knit at for a couple, for the last like two hours of uh, Sunday, which was lovely because Linda, who owns and runs Knit New Haven, is a wonderful person and it's just such a nice yarn store to sit and knit in. Uh, that door prize was uh, Cascade Yarns Bolivian Bulky, 100% Superwash Merino, and it's in the. I don't know if it has a name. This light tealy blue color. And it came with the zippity, zippity cowl pattern. So I thought that was super cool. I don't know how it's knit. Let me check. It is in the round. Yeah, it's got circular needles. Yep, so it's knit in the round. And this would be a super fun, giant, and super quick gift knit. So maybe next week when I post the pattern giveaway, I'll also post a couple, uh, a giveaway thread for some kits. The next thing I got, I believe this was from Green Mountain Spinnery. So I won at New Haven and Green Mountain Spinnery. And this one was the Victory Hat by Universal Yarns. Here's the pattern. And it's just a one page pattern. And they sent over Amorpha Universal Yarns, which is acrylic, alpaca, and mohair. And this is way softer than I thought it was going to be for so much acrylic. It does not feel like your usual red heart. And I believe that's probably because of the alpaca and the mohair. But I thought this would also be a perfect gift knit for... And it's really soft too. It's not itchy at all, even for the alpaca. Um, for your the people that deserve the knits but aren't totally ready for 100% wool kind of things and that I don't think this one has a name for the blue either I don't think it does but again it's just like a tealy blue so I think this will be another kit 
I have about seven kits from previous shop hops and I haven't knit any of them yet, but they're all great kits. <laughs> My plan is to knit them all as gifts because I love, I really enjoy the patterns, but the colors that they like give you are not like, there's a like an, a light lilac purple one and like a, a color work cowl, but I feel like they're really good knits. And then I also got a little ruler from Harrisville Designs in a size eight chow goose, 24 inch, and then size seven Knitter's Pride Straits. So how fun are these? These are beautiful. I don't knit with straights anymore, but I feel like this is gonna be a really good like learn how to knit kit gift. Cause I know so many people wanna learn how to knit and the circulars and the interchangeables and all that is super intimidating. So maybe if you just start them off on like a giant straight needle, then you can introduce them. This I feel like is gonna be really good hat needles. And I also got um, a lot of stuff is Classic Elite because unfortunately Classic Elite is going out of business and a lot of yarn stores are having massive sales on their Classic Elite. So check those out. I know Glastonbury is having a giant one, but I got, uh, they're in bloom collection so there is a sneak peek of all of the patterns and I really like this one I don't know how I feel about the sleeves so maybe it's a tank top and I really like this where's the camera Ooh, this lace cardigan there it is Ta -da! so that's definitely on my radar because I only have really two cardigans I knit a featherweight, but it just it doesn't really, it's just not. I ended up goodwilling it because it didn't fit the way, it just wasn't fitting properly and it was just staring me in the face and taunting me. So I goodwilled it. Someone else will love it dearly. Or use it as one of those sweaters that you buy from Goodwill, take apart and then re-knit your own sweater. In which case, even better. So that was the door prizes that I got and I will, yeah, put together a giveaway thread. It's just to, you know, share the goodies with you guys. And this is sort of a stash tradesies. Uh, my friend Sam went to a fabric store in Guilford, Connecticut and picked up some fabric to make herself a dress. And unfortunately, due to some human error, uh, she got a yard less than what she needed to make the dress. So we did a fabric swap. I gave her two and a half yards of, um, I got a gray, light gray material with like a white grid, very small design. And I meant to buy like, I bought a bunch of it to make like two dresses or a dress on a shirt and I just never got around to it and it's been sitting there. And this material, I have enough to make a dress for me. So we did a trade Z, so she got that gray fabric. I got this gray fabric and I'm so excited. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet. I might, it's just a very lightweight woven fabric. We don't know if it's actually reversible, but one side's this, one side's this, and I like this side much better. I have to look into it. I feel like this is gonna be a really good like summer dress. I have to go through my patterns. So if you have any suggestions, it's very drapey. It's very lightweight. Yeah, if you have any suggestions, let me know. I'm open. I do need to make some summer garments for sure. Yeah, I don't remember what brand it is or like what the actual material is, but I like it. It's really soft and I'm very excited for it. So that's all my stash stuff. It's a lot of stash stuff. It's the most I've had for a long time. I don't even know what to do with it. All right, so uh, because that was basically life stuff, I think that's it for life stuff. We're just gonna do shop update and wrap everything up. So if you are not here for that, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, let us continue. So we are having a shop update this week at 3 p.m. Thursday, June 27th at onceuponacorgi.com and I hope you can make it. We have uh, a couple things going up. First off, uh, the boyfriend line has come back. Jake was hard at work yesterday and dyed up a new boyfriend line colorway. So this is the Infinity Gauntlet. I don't know if he's got a different name for it, so that's what I'm calling it for now. And there's two versions of it. Where's the other one? Here it is. So version one is this one. Ta-da! 
and it is inspired by Marvel Comics Infinity Gauntlet, in case you didn't know. So this is version one, and this is on the Isaac base, which is 100% Polworth. And version two is on uh, Marie Cutie and one Isaac. And here it is on Marie Cutie. So uh, the speckles have been tamed. You didn't believe me when I said that they go crazy. They went crazy. So here is version two on Marie Cutie. And here is version one on Isaac. So uh, he only has six gains right now, but he does plan on dying more for SSK. So I would grab these now because they do really well at shows. So there we go. I actually really like them together too, like even version one and two. You can do a gauntlet fade. Oh, yes. Okay. So sorry, I'm getting excited. So that will be in the shop. Ooh. We will also be doing a giant update of Narnia. Mina's newest sock pattern is coming out on July 1st, and she used Narnia on our Isaac base as the sample knit. So we are going to have tons of Narnia going up in the shop on Isaac, Penny, Marie Cutie, we've got Ginger. Uh, I believe we have an Oliver in case you want an Oliver. So that, we will have tons of it. I just have a small pile here. Ta -da! So tons of Narnia will be going up in the shop. Okay, now for the, let me get it all out of the way. And we also have this weird, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's up with this yarn or what. I'm gonna email my distributor about it. But one skein went a little weird in the dye pots and like one ply resisted the dyes. So it looks like hand spun. It's not. Uh, I believe I'm gonna keep this one for myself because it's so weird and I don't know what happened to it But I think I still might knit her socks out of this. I haven't decided Just I don't know what happened. It's super cool though Like if I could consistently do this, I would just have a like mock hand spun line, but I don't know what happened We are doing a huge mohair update this week. So we did a uh, bunch of colors and the plan is to do a huge update get it out now and then just sort of fill it in for SSK so bear with me it's a long list we will have dark like my soul is this right yeah insufferably damp lady of shallot ghoul haunted woodlands of wear Blood Moon, Lidam Death, Owls Are a Must, Mermaids Don't Run Track, Mauvatone, Towers Over the Thames, Warm and Cozy, like my cold dead heart which i think this is the proper one the first one i did was very pink and this one like oh i'm so i love it so much all of the fuzz like all the mohair sticking out dyed black but then all of the silk in the string like in the center bit stayed the cult like the red colors i love it so much fairy saddle and everything's getting like oddly blown out my sun and stars moon of my life Rose Gold, Oswald for Mayor, Narnia, and La Dame Blanche. Those are all going up in the shop. I did, I will give you a sneak peek, but it's not coming out until SSK. I dyed up um, the colorway that I'm designing the shawl out of. I've decided to call Field Mice and Flower Crowns, and I did dye up some on the mohair, but this isn't coming out until SSK, so you have to wait. I love it so much. I really wish I dyed this up before and held it double in the shawl. But I do plan on making another one and I do plan on holding mohair with it because I feel like that would just be beautiful. So all of that mohair will be going up into the shop this week. It's a very big mohair base update, but mohair is what's what's going on and I love it and I'm fully ready to embrace the mohair. 
So all of the fig lace will be up in the shop once upon a corgi at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, June 27th. And I believe that's it. So I'm gonna put that all back in this basket before the dogs try and get it. All right, and I believe that's it. We've blathered on enough about the shop hop and we haven't really done much else besides that. So I will let you go. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the shop and the podcast. We will see you next time.